Ding, ding, ding. You know what that sounds like, folks? Yes, it's a sound that you hear when a boxing match starts or when there's a new round in boxing or in professional wrestling when a wrestling match starts and ends. But here in this hotline, here with the new name called Yankee Messiah 84, you want to know what that sound is, at least for this hotline, since I'm recording on a Thursday night, and this is going to be published on a Friday. It's the sweet sound of a trifecta hidden. Isn't it beautiful, folks? Jeff Passan, um, he shared this on Twitter that Carlos Beltran. Now, this is a move that surprised me. Is that Carlos Beltran is out as New York manager, New York Mets manager, due to his involvement in the Houston Astros sign stealing scandal. And this is the third manager to lose a job within a week here. And like I said, I was surprised by this move. I'm not going to lie to you on that because I thought Carlos Beltran was going to keep his job because he really had nothing to do with this. But you know me. And you know me trolling the New York Mets. You know, I always call them the New York Metropolitans. I respect what the Mets did here. I really do. Because the New York Mets looked stupid because they hired, supposedly they wanted the perfect manager and they had to Hot ways before he even met with the whole team for spring training. That makes them fucking look stupid. But now at least they'll avoid the massive distraction and tons of questions that would have followed if Carlos Beltran remained manager of this organization. And to be honest, I'm sure another thing would have happened over these next few weeks as we get into spring training. I'm sure Cespes would cook something cook something up at his farm. Noah Synagogue would probably get into a fist fight with a New York beat reporter. Now, if they had waited for this shitstorm to really end, it would have gone away with their own stupidity. But they did not want to take any chances. And you know what? That's fair enough. What this means now is that what we've seen in a week. Now, this is by far, you know, doing hotlines here on a week. Where you saw Carlos Beltran stepping away. Not to mention having to do a hotline on a Wednesday. Knowing the fact that Alex Cora got fired on Tuesday. I didn't feel like doing an emergency hotline on Tuesday. I just, I wasn't really feeling well, so to say. I had to do this on Wednesday to share my thoughts. And then it all started Monday when AJ Hinch got fired. And those three teams have no managers. It's fucking hilarious. And we're just four fucking weeks away from spring training. And no one is managing these teams. It's comical. You could have not scripted this any better. And for us Yankee fans out here, they're confused as to why 
this hatred towards the New York Metropolitans. I get that if you're not from the New York area, I guess, you know me. I'm doing these hotlines from Providence, Rhode Island. New England. Oh, I'm a New England sports fan, being New York Yankees fan, when you said you're a Boston sports fan on his Facebook page. That's the fucking shit I had to put up with last year on fucking Facebook groups. I didn't grow up as a Mets fan. I didn't grow up as an Astros fan. And sure as fuck, I didn't grow up as a fucking Boston Red Sox fan. I have been a fucking New York Yankees fan since 1995. You look at the fucking history on why I fucking despise the Mets and the Red Sox. It's not so much the players. It's just the rhetoric that we fucking come out with. We fucking attack the fucking New York Metropolitans and the Boston Red Sox. But as a Yankees fan... Seeing this news and not laughing out loud, it's just confusing. Me, I'm seeing this news and I'm laughing out loud because three organizations have been fucked this past week. Mets going to do Mets thing. It's why you fucking New York Metropolitan fans. You're the sewer rats of the world. You're the laughing stock of baseball. And yet, you fuckers want to come out and attack me. You guys want to fucking text message me saying, Oh, the Yankees are going to get involved in the scandal. Watch. Aaron Boone's going to get fired. We'll see. We'll fucking see. I wasn't fucking born yesterday. That's for sure. We're going to go over this today here on the uh, hotline here for your Friday, January 17th, 2020. I mean, recording this on a Thursday night here. And I know I wanted to get into some football. Um. Uh, Big weekend ahead, you know, AFC Championship game, NFC Championship game. Um, we're going to get into football Super Bowl week. Don't get me wrong. Um, I'm going to devote more of my coverage to football that week. Right now, the baseball world is really the talk because of this fucking scandal. So... What do I have on the docket today here on this hotline? Well, I'm definitely going to talk about um, Carlos Beltran yet again because supposedly his niece has just dropped another bombshell. Is it his niece? Is it a mole? We don't know. We'll talk about the latest scandal involving the Houston Astros. And then I'm going to get back here and talk about Jessica Mendoza. Yes. I am going to be talking about Jessica Mendoza. Yet again with the New York Mets. Um, and you know her ties to the New York Mets. Something that I want to get into because of the fact that, you know, this scandal, like I said, it's rocking sports right now. I feel like right now we're in the base, we're in the steroid era all over again, except we're not coming in and talking about um, 
steroids. Um, we're talking about cheating. So we're going to get all into that here on this uh, hotline here. And uh, make sure you subscribe, you know, hit that notification button uh, for all my live videos when they come out. Uh, even Wrestling Observer Radios, which I had up today on my channel. You know the shtick when it comes to the Wrestling Observer Radios. You know, talking about uh, Wednesday Night Wars. Uh, also, uh, the passing of Rocky Johnson. You know what? Man, I'm actually going to reflect on that today here in the hotline. Because um, I want to give you guys my thoughts. And I think I'm going to conclude it. In this hotline today, uh, paying my respects uh, to Rocky Johnson. And I know my friends at the Wrestling Forum and Tricky Sports, they did so. And I'm going to do so as a former member of that team. All right, so this Houston Astros uh, story, if I'm going to be fucking honest here with you, just keeps getting fucking interesting day after day after day. Now, as you can see from uh, the cover for this week's, uh, well, for this uh, hotline over here, not this week, but this episode here. I am going to show you some stuff over here. And I'm going to read you some tweets. Now, this supposed Twitter account with this alleged niece. It says, I'm told to stay quiet, but I refuse. Sorry, Tio. Um, with a love, with a hot emoji. Jose Altuve and Bergman wore devices that buzzed on inside right shoulder from hallway video guy. Let's get this all out now. And then later, she says, I have pictures from Locker I will keep for rainy day. Altuve didn't want shirt torn, uh, torn off. If I remember, maybe I misspoke, but Chapman gave up HR in game. She's, well, this person, I'm not going to say if it's a he or a she, but this person is referring to game six of the ALCS from this year, where the Astros defeated the Yankees. Now, Trevor Bauer... We all know this is the tweet that he came out with. We all know Trevor Bauer, all-star pitcher for the Cincinnati Reds, was formerly a Cleveland Indian and Arizona Diamondback. Now, he actually go now John Boy. I'm actually going to be sharing some um stuff from uh John Boy because John Boy. Throughout the day, came out with some very interesting tweets. Now, Trevor Bauer actually shares John Boy's Twitter, um, where John Boy talks about Carlos Beltran's niece tweeting about the buzzers, which matches up with what I've been told from about five different parties. So, there's five sources out there that know about this and Trevor Bauer said that he heard this from multiple parties too for what it's worth okay now let's get back here to um, what I like to um, go into John Boy's account and by the way I did follow John Boy over here Okay, so, um, let 
and let's see where we're going to go from over here. And we're probably going to go back to John Boyd a little bit when we talk about Jessica Mendoza. Now, after Trevor Bauer shared John Boyd's tweet, John Boyd comes back and says Chapman was also the only Yankee pitcher not to use sequences in those games at Houston. But everyone would have been sitting slider on that pitch. And it was a hanger. So, um, referring to that pitch that Chapman threw, which uh, Altuve hit the home run. And I will say, then he comes out with another tweet. I will say it's a little more fun talking about this stuff now than when I was, when I was back in November. And no one thought much of it. And then he shares this tweet. This is from Amali Rivera from ESPN. The Beltron family told me that this individual who claims to be Carlos Beltron's niece is not related to the family in any way. This person may or may not have additional information about the Houston Astros sign stealing scandal, but they're not related to the Beltrons. So what does John Boy say over here? John Boy says that someone posing as Carlos Beltran's niece, who has correctly reported two things about him before they were official. Of course, those two things were that he was going to be manager of the New York Mets and that he was going to part ways with the organization. We're in the golden age of burner accounts and fake burner accounts, which tells me that there's somebody out there, somebody out there that is putting out outside information and sharing it on Twitter. And this is what I talked about back months ago with the whole Garrett Cole situation where I talked about, oh, the Los Angeles Angels were out on the Garrett Cole sweepstakes. I guarantee you that was a mole within the Angels organization going on Reddit and sharing that. Now you got somebody that is sharing information on Twitter. So, back to this whole thing with Altuve and Alex Bregman for wearing buzzers under their jersey to tip off pitchers in real time. But this person, whether it's Carlos Beltran's niece or a mole, is adding fuel to the fire over here. We knew about 2017. Okay, but what about 2019? You saw Jose Altuve's reaction to that walk-off home run against Chapman in the ALCS. The guy demanded nobody to rip his jersey off as he was mobbed at home plate. Why? Why? Maybe because he was wearing wires under his fucking jersey. Uh, Kyle NYY uh, shared this on Twitter, and I actually saw this. Here's Ken Rosenthal, who broke the news of the Astros cheating scandal, asking Jose Altuve why he was telling teammates not to rip his jersey off after the walk-off home run in Game 6 of the 2019 ALCS. You know what? I normally don't fucking do this here, but I'm actually going to try my best to share this audio with you. Uh, 
Okay, so if you did not hear that, he said that he didn't want to get in trouble by his wife. Okay. Could you imagine if they did rip his jersey off and they found his covered in buzzers? What if they dumped Gatorade on him and he just got electrocuted and fucking died on the field? Altuve's excuse was that like I mentioned about the whole thing about his wife. To me, that's weird. Altuve then slipped into the dugout and reappeared with his World Series shirt on. It's fucking weird. Whatever it is, this is fascinating. And if this actually gets proven... Let me tell you right now. Bergman, I'll even say it too about Alice Bergman. But Jose Altuve, he should be banned from the fucking league. I'm fucking serious about this. Oh, that can happen. That can happen. What other choice do you have? The dude fucking cheated. Took his fucking cheating to the extreme. And the last baseball news of this uh, hotline here for this Friday, January 17th. I got to talk about Jessica Mendoza. We know she is the voice of what is that? Boring ass baseball coverage that they put on Sunday night, which I cannot stand. Uh, Sunday night baseball. And also, with her duties on Sunday night baseball, she is a member of the New York Mets front office. That's been enough to stay a controversy. But she made comments on Thursday that's going to cause even more backlash to the scandal. So she appears on ESPN to talk about the Houston Astros sign-stealing scandal. And I don't even want to talk about the rest of uh, what we talked about here at Carlos Beltran because I'm already fucking sick and tired of talking about Carlos Beltran. But when it this was on the uh, train... Um, Mike Golick and Trent Ringle showed out she was part of, by the way. And this is what she said. And you know what? I'm going to play the clip. You have a problem with Mike Fires leaving the Astros, going to another team, and then going public with it. Going public, yeah. I mean, I get it. If you're if you're with the Oakland A's and you're on another team, I mean, heck yeah. You better be telling your teammates, look, hey, heads up. You hear some noises when you're pitching. Like, this is right. what's going right. on for sure. To go public, yeah, that it didn't sit, sit well with me. And, and honestly, it made me sad for the sport that that's how this all got found out. I mean, this wasn't something that MLB naturally investigated or that even other teams complained about because they naturally heard about and then investigations happened. But it, it came from within. It was a player that was a part of it that benefited from it during the regular season when he was a part of that team. And, and that, when I first heard about it, it's just, it hits you like any teammate would, right? It's it's something that you don't do. I totally get telling your future teammates, helping them win, letting people know. But to go public with it, call them out, start all of this, it's, it's hard to swallow. Okay. Now, I'm going back on here. Theme of this hotline, John Boy. So, I'm going to share what John Boy said on Twitter about what Jessica Mendoza said. This opinion stinks. Being more upset at the one player who tried to clean the game than the entire team that cheated it. Also, she says teams didn't naturally complain about this to the league before Friars, and that's 100% false. Now, 
coming back to more of this and um what i'm seeing on john boy's twitter basically is response but this is what he also put um i believe let me get back to this four hours after he shared uh, what Jessica Mendoza said on a uh, garlic and tr uh, Rango, Jessica Mendoza. I don't know if this was. Um, I believe this was from Instagram. So this is what she wrote on Instagram, and I quote: "Thought it was important to clarify my earlier remarks about the science stealing situation in MLB." Most importantly, I feel strongly that the game of baseball will benefit greatly because this sign-stealing matter was uncovered. Cheat in the game is something that needs to be addressed, and I'm happy to see that the league is taking appropriate action. The point I should have been much more clear on this, I believe it's very critical that this news was made public. I simply disagree with the manner in which that was done. I credit Mike Fryers for stepping forward. Yet, I feel that going directly through your team and or Major League first could have been a better way to surface the information. Reasonable minds can disagree. Ultimately, what matters most is that his observations were made public and the game will be better for it. In regards to the Mets, I want to make it extra clear that my advisor role with the team does not shape my opinion in any way, shape, or form on this matter. I feel this way regardless of what teams, players, or managers are involved. So what does um John Boy say on Twitter in response of Jessica Mendoza? If you did an ounce of research, you know this is what happened. Two years of private reports and MLB did nothing. So they went public. Come on. This is your job. All right. So, if you have a problem with a player trying to clean up the game after we saw countless smugs and arrogant interviews from the players and coaches of the Houston Astros, pretty much daring someone to out them. We saw this with AJ Hinch and Alex Bregman. And from what I was watching from that clip that I also shared with you guys, Mendoza also went as far as claiming teams didn't complain about the Astros. Before Friars outed them. <laughs> that is fucking bullshit right there. I can fucking smell bullshit even better than a fucking mouse fart. Because the New York Yankees complained this year about the Astros whistling in the dugout, claiming. That was an obvious indication they were stealing and they were relying signs. So what did the MLB report say? That the Astros, they used whistling in the past to do the same thing. Now, Ryan Lee, um, he shared this a couple of days ago on Twitter. And this was in regards to the report. That came out about this. A fun two and a half minutes to review today. When the bullshit was so evident then. Evidence was found. Names of sources were used. You admitted your team did it to investigators. Even though you didn't like it. Won't have to answer any questions until after the World Series. How do you feel, A.J. Hinch? How do you fucking feel right now? Huh? It's not funny anymore, huh, buddy? It's not funny because guess what? You're out of a fucking job. Mind you, you should have been banned from baseball. But you got a free ride. 
But all in all, back to Jessica Mendoza. You know, she's trying to throw Friars, whose act was responsible and noble, given the integrity of the game, was being compromised. Under the bus because the organization that she works for right now is in hot water over fucking hiring Carlos Beltran. What was she doing before Carlos Beltran decided to pot ways with the team today, huh? She was trying to fucking defend her fucking team. The fucking team that she works for. The front office. Now, Jessica Mendoza, I don't care if you're fucking working for fucking ESPN, honestly. But right now, you just joined the fucking circus. Because your fucking organization that you work for could possibly be punished for this. See what happens with it, but... Yeah, I wonder if Jessica Mendoza will be on... Garlic and Rango tomorrow. Don't know. Don't really know, but, um, you know what? I've had enough of this fucking baseball shit, like, for once, and I am going to be switching to my final topic. And, of course, you know, I wanted to end, uh, this hotline here today. <sighs> On a passing that happened over 24 hours ago and of course I want to send my deepest condolences to the family friends and fans of Soul Man Rocky Johnson and it was announced yesterday that Rocky Johnson uh, passed away at the age of 75 and for wrestling fans, and I promise I'm not going to go on any type of profanity lace tirades that I've put on here, but um, for our generation, Rocky Johnson is going to be best known for being the father of Dwayne The Rock Johnson. But if you're an old school wrestling fan, and God, I wish I lived in the 70s watching this dude. Soul Man Rocky Johnson was one of the most charismatic and groundbreaking African African American performers of all time. Rocky Johnson will forever be celebrated as one half of the first African American WWF tag team champions alongside Tony Atlas. But more than that, he was a star in every territory he entered, whether it was in Florida, Memphis, Hawaii, Mid-Atlantic, and beyond. His dancing shuffle during comebacks brought the crowd up. And by the way, a little bit of a tidbit on that. That was later adopted by Shane McMahon when Shane McMahon, when Shane McMahon would come out. His promos were believable and good and physically. And the guy was built like a superhero. Literally, Johnson, who was a native of Nova Scotia, uh, for those that don't know the story, it's where his ancestors immigrated after escaping a sudden plantation following the American Revolution. Uh, he wanted to become a boxer, but he ended up becoming a professional wrestler. After working in Canada, Johnson made his way around the different territories. In Memphis, he was presented as a boxing champion who had come face to face with Jerry the King Lawler. The two would have a long feud. In Mid-Atlantic, he would wrestle under a mask as Sweet Ebony Diamond. In the NWA, he was taught highly enough 
that would challenge Holly Race and later Terry Funk for the NWA World Championship. But it was in the WWF that would lead to his most famous moment, capturing the WWF Tag Team Belts from the Wild Samoans after Captain Lou Albano accidentally nailed one of them with a chair. It was a sentimental moment that has been long remembered by fans since title changes in that era, they were rare and the sheer insane electricity that was the response of the fans in Allentown, Allentown, Pennsylvania, where Johnson became the WWF Tag Team Champion along with Tony Atlas. As a single star, he feuded with Don Morocco, Adrian Adonis, Greg the Hammer Valentine. He would wrestle off and on in the early 90s, but would forever become the Rock's dad after bringing him to WWF's attention and getting him signed. The future Rock would be billed as Rocky Maivia. We all know about that story taken his mother's maiden name as his own and initially he did flop bad remember that the rock was bad at that time but we all know the story a heel turn and incredible promo skills proved to be the key to unlocking his star power and a star power that was so great that he later left wrestling behind to become one of the biggest Hollywood stars of this era. Rocky Johnson was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame by his son in 2008, when Rock paying tribute to his father for always pushing forward and chasing the money to provide for his family, even when they were downward, there were rough times. Uh, Johnson was inducted alongside his late father-in-law, Pia Mayavita, in Orlando, which was fitting since Johnson was a big star in Florida. Rocky Johnson had a stint as a trainer for then WWE Developmental Territory, OVW, Ohio Valley Wrestling, and late last year released an autobiography detail, detailing his travels around pro wrestling overcoming racism in the territory era and the rise to fame of his son. And this news comes after The Rock announced a new NBC comedy he would star in titled Little Rock. And we all remember um, the Little Rock uh, promo that he did uh, on SmackDown when he made fun of Kurt Angle and Little Regal, um, where Kurt Angle got to touch the ball, and Little Regal got to touch the ball. Um, check that out on YouTube. I think it was Little Regal gets to keep the ball, <coughs> and Little Angle gets to touch the ball. A happy ending to... <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. A happy end into this lovely story. But this show talks about the crazy <clears throat> upbringing he had as the son of a wrestler and being a member of a family that never stopped heading for the next day and the next adventure. And you would have to think that his father would play in this series. So. One final tribute from a son to his father. So rest in peace, Rocky Johnson, man. Um, gone, never forgotten. And I hope to see you all on Monday for the latest edition of the Hotline. I don't know if I'm going to be talking about the NFL Championship Weekend. I do know that I want to put in a UFC uh, hotline in from the Wrestling Observer Radio. So uh, 
details to come in the coming days on that. Until then, deuces and love. I am out. Subscribe to this channel.